Hello everybody, welcome. We are here at the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival 2023 once again and I am so excited to go get some more food and try. Maybe we'll even finish the garden graze today. Probably not because we keep not finishing it. We did almost all we did almost all of it in one day. I think we just keep um, letting the kids uh, pick what they want so we're not really like searching out the stuff. So I don't know if we'll actually get the garden graze done or not, but um, I'd like to. I'd like to get it finished today if possible, but we'll see. I do have my eye on something that I've had before at a couple festivals ago, but they brought it back and I haven't got to do it again and I'm dying to try it again. So we'll see, should be fun. I'm starved, let's go get some food. All right, so we're gonna head into the World Showcase. Um, I do wanna hopefully finish out the Garden Graze. We have our eye on a couple of things that they think hopefully will finish out the Garden Graze because I wanna get our special prize at the end. I don't even know what it is. Um, so we'll find out. But I was walking past this um, Songbird Meadow here and I just think this is such a cool place that people don't really pay attention to. You just kind of walk through it and you don't even really pay any attention to what this area is. And it's actually a really cool thing that Disney does um, with these Purple Martin Birds. So I want to check these out real quick and show you in case you haven't seen these before or you haven't noticed them. So every year for Flower and Garden, they set up these bird feeders here, these little bird houses um, for these purple martins, which is a specific kind of bird. Um, and every year these purple martins come back. They're migratory birds. And you can see there's a sign right here. Purple martin migratory, migratory songbirds. Epcot has hosted them for over 20 years. Um, and this garden is dedicated to celebrating them. So I just think it's really cool. They have a little bit more information here about their migration patterns. Um, they fly 3,000 miles from Brazil to raise their families at Epcot. So these birds are literally coming all the way from Brazil and raising their families here at Epcot every year. Um, it says one female Purple Martin made the trip in just 11 days, which is a world record. So I think that's just so cool. I don't know how they know that. Maybe they tag some of them, but it's so cool. They have all these bird feeders. You can kind of see the birds. Let me see if I can get like a good view of one of the birds. Here's one over here that might be kind of good, good to zoom in on. And it's such a pretty bird. It, it's, it's kind of like dark blackish color, almost like a really deep purple. It's just it's such a pretty bird. Oh, oh, sweet camera work we did there. But I like it. I think it's really neat that they do that. Um, they have all this information, but it's kind of cool. So next time you're walking through here, if you're at the Flower and Garden Festival, check out these Purple Martins, because it's a really cool thing. And there's tons of them. There's a lot in there. There's one for every letter. You can see all those different letters. There's like one bird for each one. I don't know if that's a family of birds in each one of those or what. That's pretty neat. Okay, so we're on our way over to the Land Pavilion. The food we're gonna get for the Garden Graze is um, from a cart, which is so strange. I don't think I've ever gotten um, anything from the festivals at like a cart. It seems strange. Yeah, I can't recall ever getting anything from a cart for the festival in the booklet. Um, and so I was a little thrown off when I saw it in the booklet. Uh, I was going through the, the actual food items for the Garden Graze. And it said the land cart in the world of nature. Now this is the world of nature over here, this whole section over with Figment and the seas with Nemo and all that in the land pavilion. This is the world of nature. And it says the land cart, not Sunshine Seasons because Sunshine Seasons is also in the book, but that's the restaurant on the inside of the land. It says the cart. I've never seen a food item for the festival be um, at one of these like random carts. so. We're gonna walk over here and check it out. I hope they're not out of it. Well, on our way over, the butterfly house is still open. It's never open this late, so I'm not sure why. Park closes in about an hour. And yet, for some reason, it's open, I guess because it's getting, it's staying uh, brighter out later on, later in the evening, so. Woohoo! We finally get, we finally made it. <laughs> the butterfly landing. Woohoo! Okay, let's see what we got in here. Oh, yeah. Let's see. 
Lexi's been dodging this for a while because she's she feels like butterflies are gonna be in her hair. So I'm curious what she thinks. I always have to I always like feel like I need to whisper in here because it's so quiet. It's like serene, there's like music playing. It's really cute though. I love it in here. This is where all the butterflies hatch. There's a few of these actually in this garden. And if you pay attention, I've actually gotten some video of them actually hatching before. So you see all the chrysalis there. And I have actually seen a butterfly hatch from one of these. It's pretty cool. Let's see if we can catch one. We'll check out the other one up here and see if there's any, any hatching. Let's see. Because I know there's, yeah, there's one, there's a couple more. Let's see if there's any here. Any hatching? See any? Couple moving? On the top left there. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of them like wiggling there. Huh. Ooh, the Mexican flame vine. I don't think I want to touch that. That seems sketchy. There's a lot of butterflies in here. There goes one. Oh, I just saw I saw Lexi freak out just now. See if I can get a video of her flinching when a butterfly goes by. There's a lot of butterflies up in that corner up there. Yeah. Hey, it's cute in here. <laughs> oh, there she went. She went running. <laughs> She's like, I'm done. <laughs> All these little butterflies. Oh, wow, they're kind of hard to capture on film. They move pretty fast, actually. Yeah. There's a lot up here in, on this uh, this net over here. Look at this cute butterfly topiary right outside the exit of the butterfly house. Look at that. That's more of those flowers that look like they're like made out of wax. Those are cool. Well, we survived the butterfly house. So that's good. I survived it. I don't know if Lexi survived it or not. Yeah, so okay, we made it to the to the booth, which is right outside the butterfly house, and I actually have one right here. So again, weird. Um, but it does have the little marker here that tells you that it's on the garden grays. So five dollars and fifty cents. Let's try it out. I don't know if you can go wrong with cookies and cream mousse. I thought maybe it was gonna be sitting here in this ice over here, but it's not. It's actually in the in the booth. They have it in like a fridge. So, all right. So today we're trying the cookies and cream chocolate mousse. It's five fifty. Looks really good. And let's see. Looks like dirt and worms. For those of you who have made dirt and worms in school, but just without the worms. It's <laughs> good. That's good. I mean, it tastes like you got a little bit of cake in there. It's honestly just like chocolate pudding, almost, but it is mousse. So, yep. I mean, taste it. It's good. It definitely didn't go wrong. Just trying to get the cake. Right, I feel like I got no cake. I have like so much mousse. <laughs> I want some of the mousse. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah, there is a, a lot of mousse. You do? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna like it. I like chocolate. Stuff like this. Okay. I don't like it. It's no. bitter. No, 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 no. It smells bitter and no. I like that. I didn't know and I wasn't expecting it. It's like, yeah, I'm hungry. This is gonna be good. No? No. Yeah. So I knew it was gonna taste kind of bitter just from smelling it, but I love that. Like, I love dark chocolate. But let's see. Oh, my God. Yep. Wow. That's, that's really good. Strong. That's so good. Yeah. That's actually really good. Oh my gosh. It kind of tastes like ice cream. I got a monster bite. I got all the stuff in there. It looks delicious. Yum. I'm going to give it a rip. It does smell like dark chocolate or dark cocoa. I'm just going to... This whole thing, I don't care. You just go check that out. It's going... The whole thing.
Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. You gonna eat the rest of that or can I have it? I want it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I want it, but I'm not. Um, it does have a cute little flower on it. I did see that. Um, I'm gonna assume that's I'm gonna assume that's another one of those edible flowers from the land pavilion. So they're really they're really adding a lot of yeah they're adding a lot of edible flowers to their food. Um, this year we're finding a lot of them. So you wanna give it a rip? Take a take a petal. Eat the you whole sure? thing? <laughs> yeah, you can eat the whole thing. Okay. You want some? No. Just go taste the air. <laughs> tastes like dirt. <laughs> tastes like a... Tastes like a hard piece of lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> like... Ew. Like a dry piece of lettuce. <laughs> I gotta get a little bit of this to get the flavor out. I'll get one more bite. So the three of us were actually really like this dessert. Um, candy was an outlier. She was a no-go. I'm not a huge fan of like dark, bitter chocolates either, but this is good. I feel like this is like in the middle. It's not it is, too, yeah. too bitter or dark, I feel like. But it's got like a rich, deep, like chocolate, almost a dark chocolate flavor, but yeah. not quite there. <laughs> I, but I do taste like cocoa powder mm -hmm. flavor, Which you know. And it's not too moussey because I don't like when mousse oh, there is you go. really, really airy. She she learned from the best there. She's just making up words. That's what yeah. I do. I'm like I'm like I'm like I really like that toast. It tastes very toasty. That's how that's how I describe stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> she said the same thing. She said moussey. It's like it's thicker. I like it. Gosh, I don't know why we didn't get two of these. Honestly, the only thing I would change is. I wish it had a little more crumbs in it, mm -hmm. and I almost wish it was like cake consistency. That would have been money for me, but that's just me being picky. But if I had another layer of that, like whatever the cookies and cream, whatever it's supposed to be, that would have did it. It's still fire though. Mm -hmm. Well, since we're over here, we're gonna make a pit stop to journey into imagination with Figment. No wait, uh, so we're just gonna go straight in. I will say, there's nobody here tonight. Um, when we got here, we got here about 7.15 p.m., obviously, and um, we got Guardians of the Galaxy Virtual Queue. I do think they're going to be getting rid of the Guardians of the Galaxy Virtual Queue soon. Um, it's starting to get to that point where it's staying open so late and they're not, probably not getting a lot of lightning passes anymore. Hello, how you doing? Welcome, sir. That they're probably going to they're gonna do away with the Virtual Queue. So anybody who's been hoping for Virtual Queue for Guardians of the Galaxy to go away, it's probably coming pretty soon. But I was surprised, 7.15 tonight, and I was still able to get the Guardians of the Galaxy. I also did see about six o'clock before we left our house to come over here, I did see that Tron was actually still available for virtual queue at 6 p.m. too. So that is, continues to be a surprise to me. There's just not a lot of people riding that ride. senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. There's sight, sound, <laughs> smell, <laughs> touch, coochie coochie go, and taste. <sighs> taste my chicken. Can I go? Please, please, please. No, I don't want you out of my sight. Out of sight? Okay. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Figment, you are not to interfere with the tour! Our first stop... Left ear, right ear! <laughs> Left, right! What? This is odd. Um, hello? Hello? Who is this? It's Figment! Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. It's over here. All aboard. Woo-hoo! Next stop, imagination. For every sound, your ears are hearing a thousand thoughts. 
can start appearing and each of us imagines different things from just the sound your mind has wings especially when pleasant familiar smells come into play come into play <laughs> i'd love to Segment, this is not a good time it's always a good time to use your imagination so let the good times Next up on the list for the Garden Grays is going to be right here in Morocco behind me, which is at the Tangerine Cafe. We are going to be trying the Hummus Trio. I am not a big fan of hummus, I have to say. So I'm going to let all the other folks be eating this hummus. I might try, I'll probably try it, but I can, I, I'm probably not going to be a fan. But they love hummus, so they're going to give it a rip. But this cafe is pretty good. They got some decent stuff. The only thing. The only thing that I usually recommend about Tangerine Cafe is don't get the kebabs. I've never had a good kebab at Tangerine Cafe, ever. I've tried a few. They're just not good. I don't know why. Everything else, anything that's bread related, because they actually do have an oven in here. Um, let me see if I can get a shot of it. You can see the oven right here. So they have this oven, usually rocking. It's, not, it's like a stone oven or something. It's not going right now. Um, but they anything that's usually like bread related they're cooking up fresh in that oven Apparently not the hummus trio because I'm guessing we're just gonna get some like I don't know pita bread or something with that But um, usually when they have any sort of like stone bread or whatever comes out of the oven and it's always really good kebabs No, so we're here at the tangerine cafe in the Morocco pavilion and we got the hummus trio It looks really cute. I feel like it's put it like they plated it cute. Um, I love hummus, and I don't think I've ever had a hummus dish at any of the festivals because nobody likes hummus except me and mom. But um, so I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited because this one has three different kinds of, um, hum of hummus. So there's a traditional hummus and avocado herb hummus, and then a red beet and black garlic hummus. The red beet one looks a little weird, but. I'm open to trying it. Um, the traditional one looks the best because I think it might be like garlicky, but I'm not sure. Um, I don't really like avocado, so we'll see about that one. And it comes with little pita breads as well and crispy papadom. I don't know, little like chip looking things. It looks good, let's see. Ooh, it smells good. This is the red beet and black garlic. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do you like it? Oh, it's a little spicy. Like in the back of the throat. I don't really know what it tastes like. I guess a beef. Yeah, it's good though. I like it. I don't really taste, it's weird. It just tastes like hummus. Right. It's not like anything special. I don't taste anything special at all. Maybe this is spicy. Oh my gosh. Maybe it is, that's not spicy. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah, that's good, but I don't, uh, just case it tastes kind of normal. This one smells, the avocado one kind of smells like salsa. Like there's a little like salsa on top. Like yeah. salsa verde or something, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, that one kind of tastes like guacamole. It's good. Yeah, doesn't it? It's good. It's like a sour. Yeah, it's really good actually. Mm -hmm. Hang on, you said sour and guacamole. 
So that means I have got to try it. I wasn't going to try the hummus, but. Yum. That's good. I'm not a fan of hummus, like I said, but that's good. It tastes kind of like a very creamy guacamole with a little bit of that like green salsa verde, a little sour flavor. That's actually really good. Okay, so this is the traditional hummus. I can't tell what's in it. Chick but I mean, yeah, yeah chickpeas. Sort of, I don't know what those are. Yeah. Orange rind? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I've never met a hummus I didn't like, and today is no exception. There's like a lot of lemon in there. It's very lemony. Um, the beet one is probably the least favorite of the three, but yeah. um, I still bad. like it. It yeah. just tastes like traditional hummus. I really do not believe that, that there, it was, tastes like beets at all. I even had some beets in my bite, and maybe the beets just don't have much flavor because I've never actually had one until tonight. So, yeah. There's a lot of lemon in that. It's very good. What? Yeah. yeah. Like lemon juice. Now I gotta now I gotta try the traditional hummus. Um, I don't like hummus because usually it doesn't have a lot of flavor. Mm. Sweet video <laughs> view I have right there. <laughs> yeah, this good. Honestly, these hummuses. So I'm, I'm not doing the beet one because they said it just tastes like regular hummus. But the traditional hummus and the the green one. Are good. They have a good flavor. They got like a little bit, little bit of spice to it, a little bit of saltiness, and a little bit of like citrusy, lemony flavor. Actually, I might be a hummus fan now if they all tasted like that. I've always loved hummus. Um, I think my favorite by far is the, or I guess not by far, but is the avocado. Same. And then traditional second, and then the beet is just fine. So that was, a, I thought that was a really good like snack or. A food item to get because it's only five twenty-five. <laughs> Travelers, greetings. Um, the this is five twenty-five. I think that's a really good deal for the amount of food you get. And um, there was actually a lot of hummus. <laughs> um, and the chips, the uh, the chip and the pita were both good. I prefer the pita just because I like bread, but I actually like both really. So I also like the pita bread more. So that announcement that's going off right now, it happens at a half an hour prior to the fireworks show in the lagoon. And it also means that the music is going to start up. It's been relatively quiet here. And now they will have a bunch of loud music playing in World Showcase all the way up to the fireworks. So this is usually the time when we stop recording in the World Showcase because it gets really loud in here. But we're not going to be able to do that today because I have one more thing that we have got to stop and get. Okay, we got it! <laughs> the pineapple skewer with tahin on it here at the refreshment outpost over here uh, just past Germany. Just kind of a little side busted little outpost. And they've had these before at a previous festival. And I was like, I have to get this again. She's never tried it. So we're going to take a look at it and see what she thinks. So I couldn't tell. I think I made Yum. I love tahini, I love pineapple. And this is, yeah. Mm. That hits. That really hits. <laughs> Your face is telling me otherwise, no, that it's so not sour. hitting. <laughs> She's like, it's so sour. Uh, look at this, loaded it up with tahini. Let's give it a go. Mm. Mm. It's so good. It was, it was a bug that tried to go in my mouth. I mean, it's good, right? It sounds so weird. Like pineapple with like a spicy tahini on it. Sounds so weird. You're gonna give, you gotta give Nick a rip of that. You're just gonna eat the whole thing? He doesn't want it. Yeah, at least take a rip. Pineapple's good. I, I don't really need a tahini on it. I mean, 
Pineapple sweet. It's good for sure. I like the pineapple. Mm -hmm. I could have just did with a slice of pineapple. Yeah, the pineapple is actually really good. It's like fresh and delicious. I love it. And it's so refreshing, especially when it... No, we, we got a good one. One time we got this and it was just like the rind of the pineapple. And um, we should have took it back, but we didn't because you couldn't even eat it. This one's a good one, man. It's juicy and delicious, refreshing on a hot day. It sounds so weird. It really does, but I promise you it's delicious. And it's only $4.75, which I guess is kind of a lot for like just a piece of pineapple with some tahini on it, but I, I don't care. It's so good and it's, this pineapple is actually really good and fresh. It's cold. The tahini on there with the kick and the spice. Boston. Okay, the pineapple's gone. What'd you, overall review? It's so good. <laughs> if you haven't had it, try it. It's so good. Hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> Guardians, baby. Yeah, you know it. That's the best way to end the night. You can see it right here. 8.57, every park's closing and we're heading on to Guardians. That's how we usually end every single trip to Epcot. It's my favorite way to end it. And then call it a night. Let's see what song we get. All right, here we go. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Yes. Yes, that's my favorite thing. I say it every time we come in here. If there's nobody up there, there's no line. We're in business. It's walk on, everybody. I have ridden this ride over a hundred times at this point, and I am there is not is not an exaggeration. I have ridden this ride over 100 times. I have only ridden Tron a couple of times. If that goes to tell you what I think of Tron versus Guardians of the Galaxy. I like Tron. There's nothing wrong with it per se. It's just a bit short. Um, but it's just not like this. This is just such an experiential ride. I love everything about it. They absolutely nailed it with this ride. If you have not ridden it, you have to ride it. Check out our videos on it. Check out our full ride POV. If you, if you don't want it to be spoiled, don't check that out. Now, this rarely happens. Uh, we almost never see this where you get to walk straight through here. Usually, even when there's nobody in line and you don't have to wait, they still make you walk through all those queues. They never, I mean, almost never let us just walk straight through here. So that just goes to show you how few people are here. I love it. Sure this is what it looks like in guys. here when it's not working. Just want to make sure nobody gets vaporized today. You can see the little special effect is not working today. Check it out. Nobody here once again. Man, we've got this down to a science. I never have to wait in line anymore. Hopefully it doesn't break down before we get on it. But man, song predictions today. I'm guessing Just September. September. Yeah, yeah. Calm down. Congo. Disco Inferno. September. I know what I want. Rarely ever get it, but I know what I I've want. I've never had it. <laughs> Let's go. We finally got it. It took forever. But we got it. <laughs> we got it. We got it last time, and Nick wasn't here. Lexi got it before Nick, and, we, and Nick was sick that he, oh, yeah. you. Nick was sick that he was missed it. But now we got it. My prediction was right. We totally got it again. So Nick, what'd you think? This one Inferno, right? It was popping. Yeah, I like it. It's popping, right? That's 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 it. That's my song. That's my jam. I love it. It's so good. Now that was another awesome. Flower and Garden Festival evening. Man, what a, it was awesome. I love the hummus. That was shockingly good. I might, I might have to stop saying that I'm not a hummus fan anymore. As good as that hummus was, honestly. I, Morocco, I said this on the video. If it's bread, get it at Morocco. Yeah. If it's meat, don't. don't get it. The kebabs, no, hard pass. Uh -huh. No, no, hard yeah. pass. Anything bread though is always good there. Always. So um, overall, awesome night. Got a lot of great food. Great. I thought the, the cookies and cream mousse thing was awesome. The pineapple tahini was awesome. 
the hummus was awesome. So, and we got to ride Guardians of the Galaxy with no weight. And it was a good crowd, a good crew of people with our with our ride. People were excited to ride it. It was a lot of fun. We got Disco Inferno. There wasn't very many people here. There wasn't, and uh, we have to do the butterfly house finally. And we got Lexi to do it. We got her to do it. She did freak out. <laughs> I don't know I how think I got some of it on the video. Raised a child who's afraid of butterflies. <laughs> in the world. But it was such a fun night. We were only here for like less than two. I think it was like two hours. Less than two hours. We were here for an hour and forty-five minutes. We got a ton done. So anyhow, thanks for joining us. Hope you also love the flower and garden festival. It's one of the best. It's definitely one of the best, um, and highly recommend. It's a long festival though. Got a long, we still have a long way to go, so we might try it. Oh, and I forgot to say, we did finish the garden graze, but we didn't pick up our treat because we had to get to Guardians before it closed. Yeah. And I was like, we'll just pick up the treat next time. So on the next Flower and Garden Festival episode, don't miss it, we will pick up our reward for the garden graze. That's the great thing about it. You don't have to do it all in one day. You can do it in different days and it's awesome. So anyhow, thanks for joining us. Until we see you next time, no way. It's the easy way. Bye-bye, everybody.